Welcome to our monthly economic update. This month, we'll take a closer look at inflation, which is a critical part of our narrow path journey to ongoing economic stability. Through the period that was COVID, an enormous supply side shock hit markets. You'll recall costs of shipping going through the roof, as did the cost of items like semiconductors, energy, food, and a range of other items that depend on operational logistical chains. Coming out of the COVID period, governments and regulators globally had thrown the proverbial kitchen sink into stimulatory measures aimed at kickstarting growth. Supply chains were normalising, consumers were spending, businesses were hiring, and a V-shaped economic recovery was underway. Inflation was beginning to pick itself off the canvas from its decade-long low observations. Everything was looking, well, pretty good. But then, in February 2022, Russia invaded the Ukraine, and yet another supply shock hit markets, particularly around food and energy. Inflation took off globally, ahead of growth in consumption and productivity. So governments and central banks stepped in, tightening fiscal spending and increasing market interest rates. And now back to Australia. After a long period below the Reserve Bank's target inflation range of 2 to 3%, inflation peaked at 7.8% in December 2022. Of course, interest rate hiking was well underway and was working. Consumers were tightening their belts and inflation began falling as fast as it rose. But where to from here? We're regularly asked our forecast on interest rates. And so far in 2024, serious commentators and market forecasts have ranged from two to three more hikes to two to three more cuts. No one really knows. And each new data release to market sees views oscillating back and forth. March CPI figures show items like clothes and footwear falling by 1.1% in the quarter, as discretionary spending is being cut from household budgets. On the other hand, the ABS monitors 13 different business segments and found that 12 of these have improved their turnover year on year. So the Reserve Bank is particularly circumspect. You would think that with the direction of inflation since its peak, that it could relax. But it continually points to uncertainty, to the persistence in services inflation numbers, the lack of productivity improvements, the weakness in economic data, and also its variability. In short, it doesn't know either. What it does know is the history of inflation. In the early 1970s, oil producing nations cut production, which saw the cost of oil essentially quadruple over a few short months. This had an enormous impact on inflation. We had high inflation and low economic growth, or as it was described, stagflation. Why does this matter? It matters because inflation, which had been broadly stable through the 1960s, took off. The oil embargoes were announced in October 1973. Inflation was running at about 4.7%. It didn't get back below that level sustainably until 1991, so nearly 20 years later. But how was it brought under control? Well, largely using the same levers available to governments and regulators now. In September 1973, you could get your home loan at a rate of 7% per annum. This steadily increased for the next decade. Now you'll notice that borrower rates continued to be lifted even as inflation was seemingly falling. Our national accounts may have looked like a beautiful set of numbers in 1989, but with average borrower rates peaking at a whopping 17% in 1990, this was shortly followed by the recession we had to have. Unemployment hit a massive 11%, and home loan borrower rates weren't sustainably back below 7%, where they'd been back in the 1970s until 1997. So while a lot was going on in through that period with the deregulation, the float of the dollar, globalisation and the like, we had a supply shock, and that was the genesis of a 20-year inflation cycle and a 25-year rate-hiking cycle, which culminated in a deep recession. But there's a lot going on now too, and to quote Mark Twain, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. 
inflation has spiked and interest rates have followed. With that in mind, the resolve of the Reserve Bank must not be broken to successfully wrest inflation back under control. Governments too must also share the burden. Avoiding a recession today might be electorally palatable, but falling real incomes and standards of living for a generation or more, 11% unemployment and a deep recession, well that's far worse. And we're not there yet. Thank you for watching. Thank you.